Have you ever thought what's inside a vet's head? Hi guys, I'm Victoria and you're hanging out with the Husky Squad. Here is Yuna, relaxing, and there's Titus, our only boy, and here's Kimari. She's about to fall asleep. They've already all had their exercise for the day, and this is what Huskies do when it's warm. They relax after we do their morning exercise or and or their evening exercise for the day. Today, we invite you to a very special episode that we're honored to share with you. Our holistic veterinarian friend, Dr. Peter Dobias, that's usually based out of Vancouver, happened to be in Switzerland in the same village where we are, and we got together, candidly started talking about different subject and decided to film it for you so you can be part of the conversation. We talked about so many different things from cancer to raw food diets to kibble to the US versus Europe and how dogs live and different quality of life. We talked about so many amazing things, fears dog parents have, and we know this is going to be an incredibly enlightening and somewhat surprising experience for you. Our friend, Dr. Peter Tobias, comes from 30 years of practicing veterinary medicine. He first started with traditional medicine and then you'll have to hear his own story why he started practicing holistic medicine and he has amazing experience under his belt coming from so many different angles so this is going to be very enlightening to you before we begin the interview i want to share with you that dr peter dobias was very generous to share something very special with us and with all of you at the end of this interview. So be sure to stick around where we share all the details and this will be for a very limited time. So make sure you take advantage of that. All right, guys, enjoy. So I think we should say hi. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, we're so excited uh, because uh, I have uh, yesterday, last night, I get a message from my team say, hey, do you want to meet the Husky Squad? And uh, and I said, where are they? Uh, well, they're in Switzerland and they're in Nanda, in the mountains. I said, well, we're in Nanda, but you're leaving tomorrow morning. <laughs> so, uh, so I immediately texted JC and I think he didn't get the message. And then we were in I the mountains and we yeah, didn't Yeah, and I didn't texted, get texted uh, you and then I get the message right away. It's 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> So I was really excited as well to meet the doggies because I'm I'm very doggy deprived. I have two more two, two more, more weeks, weeks to go. go. <laughs> so you're getting a big fix now. And then Pax is uh, Pax is coming home with us. It'd be nice to meet him next time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And hang out with the Pax. So I, I, you know, I'm still. I, I was so excited this morning that I can't remember all the names. So <laughs> just... No worries, it's gonna take a while. So, so Titus. So, Titus. Titus. He's our only boy. And who's over there? That's you now. You know? She's the alpha girl. Titus. And where's you Kimari? Know? You should call her over here. Mashi's! Mashi! Come here, mama love. Hi! Hi, baby! <laughs> Hi! Hi. You Hi. wanna come hang out? Yes? No? <laughs> she, she, they're all very independent. And, yeah. you know, we just let them yeah. be. That's why yeah. we have the dog beds here. We put them outside sometimes. They have the couch. You guys are lucky dogs. <laughs> You're such a good parents. Yeah, and we're, we're equally excited to meet Dr. Peter Tobias. We found his blog when our Kimari was diagnosed with cancer. Um, that was about almost two years ago. She has plasma cytoma, and it was a, like a big blueberry on her on her toe. It's a long story, which I'm not going to go into detail as we're having this conversation, but point is, is that our vet back then, our traditional vet told us that she'll have to get surgery and she wanted to cut her toe off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Kimari is our, is our wildest girl. She loves the mountains so much. And to us, for her to just cut the toe off, it's like taking something very special that she needs yeah. to use in the mountains. Yeah. That's yeah. one. Reason number two, I felt that when there's a tumor, that's the body telling you something is wrong. 
It's yeah, not. So it's not just. And I'm not a doctor. This was just my intuition. Well, you're, in, you're intuitive, and <laughs> I think that sometimes that's that's even more important. As a dog parent, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, empowerment, right? Like you can't really always trust what doctors say. I'm sorry. I'm saying that right here. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't wait to share this with our audience because you know those are the things that I talk about. It's not this respect to the doctor. It's just that. Even doctors' knowledge just comes passed down from human knowledge for many, many years that we're collecting, right? So it's it's not like some knowledge for some mag magical place. It's just collection of data, right? So point is, is that that was my feeling. If we're gonna not gonna address what's causing the cancer, then we're not actually addressing the problem. And I felt that if we're gonna cut the tumor off, the body's gonna retaliate and send more. That was my intuition back then. So we started looking for a holistic vet and. We found Dr. Peter Tobias' blog, and I was just like, oh my God, I'm going to drive Kimari all the way to Canada to go, to go see you, because I didn't want to do um, you know, the I, traditional I, way I, he wants I, love. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, he didn't. So and it was solved then, miraculously. Well, we found a holistic vet locally in the end, because yeah. you know, obviously you're far, and you have your, your own <laughs> practice and everything, uh, and then we, 28 days, the holistic vet in Portland, who is amazing. You would yeah, love him if yeah. you would ever meet him. We should probably get together. Connect, yes. Yeah. He is amazing. <laughs> and he practices Chinese medicine. Nice. And nice. in 28 days, Chinese medicine, a raw food diet, got her mm -hmm. off of kibble. Mm -hmm. The tumor just started shrinking, shrinking, yeah. and yeah. it disappeared. We never even, yeah. was, I don't even remember. I have to look up yeah. to remember where the term, tumor was. And I can yeah. include, if you want, a picture here on, on the video of her tumor. Yeah, that would be interesting. Yeah. You know, just to kind of let you know that uh, when it comes to tumors, they are definitely an expression, energetic expression of some sort of systemic imbalance, energetic imbalance, congestion of energy. So once you ignore the signal and you actually remove it, uh, quite often, the, the imbalances are just driven in a different area of the body. So that was and that's how the metastases happen and that's how animals actually end up with more serious problems even. You know, this was on a periphery, but if you removed it, maybe it would move actually inside and in the internal organs. So that's something that I, I've been noticing quite a bit, that, that uh, once you start being really aggressive with treatments where you don't need to be at the beginning especially, mm -hmm. um, the condition gets more yes. serious. Yes, yeah. Yeah. that so. was my intuition too, and I was afraid of that. Even though the vet that traditional vet recommended that, I was afraid of that. And it's the words that you're saying. It literally sounds just like her. Our looking vet important, <laughs> like you twins. That's exactly what he was telling us too. Yeah, yeah, and he yeah. also said in general, which is something that made us think about the whole aspect of respect for dogs, is that how are we allowed, like who are we to say that our dogs can go through chemotherapy? Are we asking permission, permission to yeah. go through that kind of torture? Yeah. You know, it's, it's not something that is easy to go through. At least a human, you can ask them that. But dogs, you can't. So. Is it good? I like scratching my back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my back scratch. He's very happy right now. <laughs> Titus are is loving happy? it. Titus are has been happy? through his, his share of, of difficulties too. Uh, and slowly, you know... They bring, bring us challenges. They challenge us uh, on an emotional level. They challenge us in making decisions as well. How yes, to make decisions. Feeling very decisions. responsible for that. Absolutely. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, it's tough. It's, um, it's the most beautiful thing to be a dog lover. And it's also the most difficult one, I think. Besides yes. being a parent. Right? Like, I well, we are parents. parents. So anyway. well, the, well, we are parents, but furry parents. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. I, I think you're very right, and especially... Are you furry? You don't seem to be very furry. <laughs> I'm burned from the mountains. I love your hair, though. <laughs> Thank you. I don't have any. <laughs> I should actually take the hat off, maybe. <laughs> but it's a little chilly this morning, so I don't want to be cold. I, it's a nice um, thing, though, instead of the heat, right? But, you know, you, we were talking about... Um, we were talking about how important it is to respect dogs. And yes. uh, I think that this is where we are really aligned as well. That's one of the things. <laughs> because I, yes. you know, I, 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 I'm always perplexed by the idea that, that we humans have decided that we are superior to all the other animals in, mm -hmm. in nature. We are in general. Animal. Yeah, we're in also general. animals, yeah. And uh, that they should have lesser rights. Uh, you know, sometimes I have people saying, what do you mean you feed your dog organic vegetables? We get the so same first, thing. Or must first, be nice. Or, or meat, right? Yes. Like, first, it's better for the environment. And second, 
who are we to say that we're entitled to everything that this Better planet... Better than the dogs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, equality, mm -hmm. dog or animal slash human equality has mm -hmm. been a big issue for me. Has it been yeah. for you as well? Yes, we feel the same way. And this is something that on, on our channel, on our YouTube channel, we talk about because whenever we make food for them, it's always organic, it's always top notch. I think that we spend more money on their food than our, <laughs> our, our own food. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the way I look at it is that dogs actually are in a way more fragile, and cats, domesticated animals, are in a way more fragile position than our, our human children. The reason why is because a human child at age three, four, already has the capacity to think and even make decisions. So if and they're in say danger, what they like, what they don't they can, like. Yeah. Well, dogs yeah. say things too, but different, yeah. a different yeah. way, right? Yeah. <laughs> but they can, they can make right. a decision. They can go to the cops and be like, "My parents are abusing me." They can do something, right? Yeah. Dogs' lives, literally from A to Z, whether they're even yeah. born yeah. and how long they live, and the, the quality of life is entirely up to us. Yeah. yeah. And if we don't give them the best possible. They don't have it. They don't have a choice. They can't. Well, they could try to run away, but then they end up in a shelter. Maybe yeah. they end up being euthanized. So mm -hmm. they, they don't have freedom mm -hmm. in, in our society. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with you 100%. Right? And you know, the biggest challenge that I find is that, that people want to do well for their dogs. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they don't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they don't know what they don't know. So you have people feeding the best quality kibble, right? We've been there. The best quality kibble. Well, yeah. it's like saying that there is the best gas uh, gasoline for the diesel car. Like it just doesn't work doesn't because work kibble this. kibble is not species specific. Yeah. Exactly. And so it's been really difficult, like seeing family dogs, right? Mm -hmm. Dogs of family or friends, and then you walk in their house for and a visit, know. and then you see the kibble in the house, and uh, you see their dog has, you know. Um, flea products uh, you know in the drawer there somewhere stored yeah, and, all these and, chemicals. and chemicals and and uh, then you look at their drug cabinet and it's the same thing mm -hmm. so medicine when it comes to medicine it's actually it just needs to be rehauled completely because I think that we have to For drop the idea of um, using chemicals that are toxic no matter what they're they're foreign they're Even toxic for homes or cleaning it doesn't matter exactly right? or as drugs, as treatments, we can't mm -hmm. really assume that when we are adding chemicals in the body, the, the body it's is going to be, be okay healthier. With that. Yeah, yeah, like absolutely. It, there, it's always a compromise. There's always some sort of side effect yes. or some sort of payback, right? right. Later on. So. Well, that's I, it's a little bit off subject, but I, we're having conversation, Jay Z and I, that Jay Z's my partner. He's just filming in the video. Hi. I guess you guys are confused. <laughs> he's, he's smiling and he's, he's got a still hand. Like he has no <laughs> tripod. I can't believe it. <laughs> I'm right here, right behind the camera. <laughs> but we, we had this conversation about, in general, about um, diets, human diets. Why do we see so many diets at Kins? You know, because we've forgotten how to eat. We eat mm -hmm chemicals we, and the same thing we're doing with our dogs that's why yeah. there's so much business to fix those problems because yeah. we're not living a healthy natural life i you know yesterday we were hiking uh close to the longest glacier mm -hmm. and um the whole time we were hiking i was thinking this is so bad that we don't have a dog 15 more days <laughs> i couldn't you know it was just like constant because yeah. we loved hiking with sky yeah. like it was like it was his favorite past time like he just that's you know what, these that's dogs. how we bonded yeah. we talk yeah. about creating that connection yeah you know yeah. when we first got got titus that was about 10 over 10 years ago we immediately fell in love with the dog and i think a lot of people feel that yeah. but how do you go beyond just like oh cute fluffy thing to building that connection connection and, and, relationship and we feel that and the respect. outdoors yeah. the outdoors yeah. is a key element that's what happened to us the minute we started going hiking Camping, sleeping with them in the same yeah. tent. It's yeah. just yeah. that, that feeling. They love it, huh? Yeah, they uh, love all, all of us together. They love sleeping in a tent. Like, yeah. it's the den for it's them. It's the den. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we even heard a pa two packs of coyotes cackling to each other from distances. And all they did is just like, hmm? look up. They find they're in their den with yeah. us and they're happy. Yeah. Yeah. But nice. fun. the interesting thing you just mentioned about Switzerland and hiking here and we're talking about rights for dogs and just for them to be able to live and have these experiences. That's one of the reasons why we wanted to try being away from the U.S. is because we couldn't do any, well I shouldn't say anything, but we couldn't do a lot of the things with mm -hmm. our pups mm -hmm. the way we mm -hmm. want to. Mm -hmm. Going you know? on gondolas yes. and going on streetcars and exactly. metro. And, uh, there's, this is actually yeah. something that I'm really passionate about as well. Mm -hmm. Like I, 
I can't stop taking pictures of dogs and gondolas and 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 I saw your public video on Instagram. transits and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and uh, you know and nobody gets hurt and this is no. the the funny misperception there's a few yellers in North America in the states and Canada mm-hmm. and they just basically create the rules and I find that um, it's so unfair because 40% of the families in the states and Canada animals. have dogs mm-hmm. And animals and and we are taxpayers and 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 how does it happen that we don't have any access to public beaches and spaces so we definitely need to bring the European culture of where dog dogs lovers, are in restaurants yes. and, and and everywhere mm-hmm. uh, to North America and make people realize that it actually makes us happier and healthier yes. and dogs kind of bring that connecting element because now we are living in a society where we have our cell phones and and people don't even say hi to each other and dogs definitely connect us right yes they so remove just, that that element because yeah, yeah, you can't the block. Really, yeah right that's, that's, the, the, that's, that's the key yes that that's is the, the key. key to unlock the connections <laughs> yeah i mean we we were in zermatt yesterday which is a blend of locals and you know a lot of tourism obviously but we met some wonderful people and we started conversations that we never would have had if not yeah. for our three dogs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because if you imagine you walking on, on the own, street on your own. It would have been nothing. Yeah. Do you think that the reason why ca- countries like Canada, US, possibly Spain and other places, why they treat dogs the way they do from a higher level is because they were considered just working dogs or dogs with a purpose. They weren't really part of the family. Do you think that's the old way of thinking? You know, I, I, I don't really know. I think that it, uh, there's a lot, um, lot to do with awareness and maybe with cultural traditions. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say that Central Europe and the Germanic nations are generally liberal, like from, from dogs in restaurants to... Mm-hmm. No clothes on the beach, right? Most people. So it's just like, uh, you know, it's it's a very different culture. I think in Europe, dogs are lucky because they have uh, the British queen and she is uh, obviously a dog lover. So everyone tries to be like her. I think that's really good. Um, I think that in North America, we have become such a, you know, I came from an Eastern bloc from the Czech Republic originally. Right. I came to Canada in 1991. And having the experience of living in the Eastern Bloc and then North America, I realized there are a lot of similarities when it comes to the control and the policing and all that stuff. And now mm-hmm. I come back to Europe and Czech Republic and I see how much more free it is. It's changed. Um, mm-hmm. So it, it kind of, you know, it kind of makes me want to say that we need to be careful because the kind of gradual creeping of the signage and restrictions and don't do this and don't do that and, you know, can be very dangerous because uh, it's being done under the auspices of protecting the public. Mm-hmm. But I think that, that the but public can actually control themselves. Like, you know, you go here in any place and people are very liberal. Like you can see someone sipping wine on the street, like if they want to, mm-hmm. but it doesn't necessarily mean that there are more drunk people or people who get hurt mm-hmm. when it comes to dogs. Dogs have many more freedoms. And I have mm-hmm. not seen any canine problems and any canine fights. Actually, way which, less than in exactly, the Exactly. Because dogs have actually the tendency or they, they like to connect. They like to sniff others and say hi. They're pack animals. Exactly. Yeah. And if they don't have the opportunity to, to do that, then they become anxious and angry and, and frustrated. Like and yeah. Exactly. So the leash laws, like in Canada, in Vancouver, if I was an obedient citizen... Mm. My dog would never be off leash in public, right? And and what kind of life is it? Like, For a dog. Yeah, we have to be careful about not to be too overregulated, and we have to, we have to really fight for our dogs to be to part of our life, family yeah. and have good lives. And I think that that reflects in our lives and our health as well. So, I think one of know. the I just wanted to mention one of the issues in, in especially in the U.S. is the lawsuits. Because, for anyone example, in REI, the outdoor store, they don't allow dogs inside. And their excuse is that, you know, uh, people can be allergic to them. But then, then again, <laughs> here, you can go on trains and nobody complains about, about that. Allergies. So is it all lawyers' fault? <laughs> I don't know. It's, it, don't we always want to try to narrow down what the reason is, right? Yeah, and it's not fair to blame any particular group. But I think as, as a society... There's so many things. To, we need to kind of, you know, it's an attitude, right? Like it's, mm-hmm. uh, 
It's an attitude. It's culture. Down. It comes it, down to yeah. culture. I do see a couple of things in common when it comes to healthy living for your dogs. Is I'm sure one of them you're going to know really, really well is the fact that people are brainwashed when it comes to diet, that whatever is in that bag, that's complete and their yeah. dog is going to be fine. Yeah. Yeah. If you're going to take matters in your own hand as a dog parent, that means you're putting your dog at risk for being malnourished, for having all these issues, and nobody wants to be afraid. That's the reason why it took us that long to switch ourselves. I, was, yeah. I didn't trust yeah. myself as yeah. a dog parent that I can actually do this. I can put a ball together and I know that I'm giving them complete nutrition. And our holistic vet, I was freaking out in the beginning about the diet. And I was like, what am I missing? Is there minerals? Is there this? Is there that? He's like, Victoria, everything in nature is in that bowl. Like you, you have everything. You don't have to worry about it. Trust me. Just trust yourself as a dog parent. <laughs> and that was a huge switch for me. And I, I wonder if you see that in the, you know, in your community too. Well, you know, here. I've gone through, this is a really good question. And, you know, we have only limited amount of time. You I know. know but I, um, <laughs> Well, As I practice, I went through the transition from conventional vet to uh, becoming interested in nutrition and homeopathy. I read the whole story. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I had one, one day, uh, I was actually looking after this golden retriever that had ear problems and um, we couldn't solve it. And um, the dog went to a specialist and the specialist said, you have to have your dog's ear canal removed. And my client and I were just saying, absolutely not, absolutely not. And I was I was working in Whistler, BC, which is a ski resort. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a vet, so it was really fun to ski wow. up and down and then go for an emergency and <laughs> go up skiing. Actually, it was pretty hard because there was a lot of emergencies, a lot of busy kind of uh, tourist, practice. Uh, tourists yeah. too? Tourist uh, emergencies? Yeah, actually more kind of locals Local. who let their dogs roam and then they got hit by car. And it was really It was really hard. Anyway, so uh, my friend and I were skiing, and she says, you know, uh, I've been feeding raw food for some time. I said, oh, raw food? No, absolutely not. And because I was, you know, I was you're recommending kibble in the, the mid-90s. It's not absolutely. because you were a bad vet. It's because that's what you were taught, I was right? brainwashed, basically. <laughs> so, um, so I said, okay, well, let's try it. And so we did. And a month later, the dog had almost zero ear problems. And two months later, he was totally fine. That must fine. have been... It was like crazy. So then I started looking into holistic disciplines and I started looking into Chinese medicine and homeopathy and then I took courses of Dr. Richard Pitcairn and then I, you know, five or seven years later I started teaching homeopathy for dogs and uh, and uh, it was fun. But um, nutrition has been one of the biggest aha moments for me, not only in my life because I used to have really severe allergies and and I basically cured them with diet. Mm -hmm. But when it came to dogs, I saw this transformation from kibble to natural, like absolutely miraculous. And it felt like 70, 80% dogs just needed to switch diet and they were yeah. healthy. They become healthy, became healthy. So then I kind of uh, started to kind of explore what, what could be done. And uh, I had the same concern whether diet would be complete. So we have... Um, or I started looking at um, hair testing or figuring out whether there is enough you know, minerals that, right? and all that, right? We did that with them. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know, I know. So, uh, so then I thought, okay, diet may not be completely um, balanced, even the natural one, because our environment has been affected by food transformation. Too, yeah. And we created this little chart where we kind of show what would happen in Africa and the flow of nutrients. And mm -hmm. I love Africa, by the way. So we used Africa for flow of nutrients. Mm -hmm. And then what happens in our natural, in our modern world? And in our modern world, um, we transport food for long distances and it doesn't right. get back in the soil. Mm -hmm. So we started to see differences when we supplement um, minerals mm -hmm. or we get the, so the other right? nutrients. Absolutely. Vitamins and omega oils and probiotics. And minerals, in my mind, are the most miraculous because there are 37 trillion reactions, chemical mm -hmm. reactions happening in the body every second. Mm -hmm. it's, it's crazy, right? Mm -hmm. And if the missing blocks are not present, then the reactions cannot happen. And that's how right. disease happens. Right. So we started, I started kind of looking for the ideal mineral, balanced mineral source. And we came across alga calcarea 
And then I thought, you know, why don't we just put some amino acids, essential amino acids. So I put spirulina in mm -hmm. and that's how Green Min was born. Yeah. And that was the per first product. Yeah. And um, still need to get our hands on it. <laughs> and uh, you know what, I'll, I'll actually, if you come with me, I think I may have one, one jar, box. one jar here, <laughs> and we're gonna be sending you some for sure. The cell food and Green Min and Omega, you know. So anyway, of course I put the face of Sky on the bottle of because I, you know, Sky passed away in 2017, and um, and before he did, and when we created this product, I thought I want him to be there forever somehow, and he is, he is right? And yeah. I, I sometimes have. You know, I'm gonna. It's difficult to talk about losing him and losing mm. dogs, but anyway. Uh, so yeah. Alga Calcaria is an algae from Brazil. Uh, we get certified organic one, and uh, and it has a full mineral spectrum. And mm. once you provide the building blocks, it's like the body gets charged. I actually take Green Min for dogs. <laughs> oh, you, you and our holistic vet are twins. <laughs> That's what he told us. He's like, I take this. He's, it's a special green concentrated that. Yeah. Is a yeah. lot of that too. He, he has it every single day. Well, you know, I, I think that some, somewhere when you really live your truth and when you start kind of listening to your, to, Just find this so to your heart, yeah. you know, we're similar too, right? In yes. many ways. <laughs> um, life just aligns and it just guides you. It's like a river and you just choose left and right, left and right, the branches, right? Which yeah. one? Uh, but, but you don't stream, go against go the stream. Go backwards, yes. And I think that in Western medicine, and this is the sad part, and I feel that there's so much work to be done still. In Western medicine, we sometimes try to go against the flow mm. and uh, it shows. And, and it's I accepted, think that, as a, people were mock, mocking us, they were saying that that's the gold standard. So for example, when we opted not to do surgery for Titus because of the research that I've done on that TPLO surgery, there were few, not a lot. And I think there may have yeah. been some veterinary stuff there too, saying that we're doing the wrong thing because TPLO is the gold standard. Whenever we talk about traditional medicine, it's the gold standard made by whom, right? And why? Well, you know, uh, there's a lot to be said about double standards, actually, in medicine, too. Uh, I've mm -hmm. seen some dogs recovering from cruciate surgeries. Mm -hmm. I, I think that the basis for recovery is actually very good care, which you have provided. And, and it's ongoing, um, right? And it really depends. In, even in humans, you don't always do surgery for cruciate ligament tears. Mm -hmm. And the same applies for dogs. Like, I would really consider all the options. Like, I, I like to be kind of somewhere in the middle, not, not to... Not to say that one method is, is totally, completely wrong for everyone mm -hmm. and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, last year I had a little bit of a challenge because my veterinary college in British Columbia and Canada told me that I can either do my work and, and have my products and do my online work and, 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 and educate and empower people or keep my license in BC. So it was very That's difficult. It was very difficult for me. And... Um, and I basically ended up giving my British Columbia license, and I'm now licensed in the European Union, and um, where I have you more freedom. You are in European. Yes, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. Where I have more freedom. But when we were having that last session with uh, the registrar of the college, and I said, you know, she says, you, you basically can't, you always have to say on your website that whatever you're suggesting is not scientifically proven and recommended uh, on, on some level. And I said, well, you know that half of the stuff that we do in conventional medicine is actually not scientifically proven in veterinary medicine. And I feel this is a double standard. Right. And she says, yeah, it's a double standard. You're going to follow it. Oh. So uh, I basically just decided I want to be part of the system. And I, I just gave up my license in Canada. And I still can use my title because I am educated as a veterinarian, but conventional you just can't veterinarian. But I don't practice in Canada, mm -hmm. and, and it gave me actually more freedom to be outspoken and talk to people about what really is happening in right. medicine. And um, um, I think it's, that's the most important thing that dog parents are looking for today. Yeah, you know, I think there's so much. Are we making much, the right yeah, decisions, yeah. right? Because I think that's the yeah. biggest fear. Our dogs. Well, I think dogs do talk differently. I think I know they talk. <laughs> I don't. I don't really talk. But. <laughs> but it's just that they, they they can't literally tell us 
communicate, mom, this hurt, this food that you gave me, just give me a bloated stomach ache, right? If you only if you pay really attention, the dog is gassy, right? You, Absolutely. That's when you know. But I think the fear of what we've been told as dog parents over the years that, oh, if you're not going to do this, if you're not going to do that cancer surgery, or if you're not going to do TPLO, can't let you know that there's another possibility of doing something. Those type of things, that fear that we're not doing the right thing, that's what we have to change. And I feel like people like you, and even us dog parents that are experienced and passionate about these subjects, are able to empower each other with a person like you. But and with, with, with people <laughs> like he as well. You know, I think it's so. Uh, uh, there should be monopoly for medicine by mm. veterinarians. And there have been the, the business pressures have been there that, you know, that veterinary medicine tries to monopolize uh, dog care and cat care and animal care. And I think that it's wrong. Uh, mm. When I was in my holistic practice, I felt there were so many animals who needed my help and I got burned out. And I thought, how, how can I solve it? Well, I'm going to educate. I'm going to teach dog lovers. That's the best thing to do. And I kind of specialize in dogs because, you know, there's so much to learn about every single every it's single species. Easy, yeah. So, I decided that I would like to empower people, learn as much as I can, and basically treat out myself out of out of the practice. Yeah. Uh, just, just not not having any work. It well, you can, reach, didn't you can reach way more people that way. I feel. Yeah, it's uh, so. Anyway, over the time, we created courses on. Uh, you know, I created this health and longevity course, which, which is took. available online. Yeah. And um, if I always say that if people take this course, they're going to prevent many, many different problems. Mm -hmm. um, but people these days are a little, you know, they're busy. They, there's so much That's to do. That's another issue. That was, I was going to mention subject number two is the time. Yeah. But then again, that goes back to just the way we operate as a culture. Why do you care so much about the car that you get? It's a perfect car and you research it and you drive it and you yeah. baby it. Yeah. But yeah. then your own body or your dog, your health, your family, yeah. it just becomes this thing that we don't have time for. And we get busy and we get, uh, we get uh, you know, we work for we work having for extra, a bigger house or bigger car. And then at the end, we realize that it's all actually is not as valuable as time with our dogs and with yeah. our families and exactly. our friends exactly. and connecting like we were do doing yeah. today. So I'm, I'm super excited that we actually made it happen. Made it happen, yeah. And again, there's no coincidence that we ended up in the same spot <laughs> at the same time. In a small village. In all of Switzerland, yeah, we we're six minutes away from each other for yeah. a week, and yeah. we had no idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but we, yeah, we made but it. But it happened. Yeah, so. but this should this should be the first one though. There's more to come. Absolutely, we'll be. We promise that we'll work together yeah. to make sure that dogs have better lives and that um, we have more friendly countries and spaces, yes. and that dogs can go to restaurants and they can travel metro and planes and yeah. and gondolas, and that we actually embrace they them as the. Anything. Ambassadors for better life, right? Yeah. 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 yeah they, life is better with dogs for sure. Life is uh, better with dogs because they came to teach us how to be better human beings. Yeah. And, uh, if we listen, then we have a lot to learn. We yeah. learned. We learned so much from them. It's amazing. They've given us way more than we can ever give them. So we promise we'll get together again. Yes. With JC and Victoria and the doggies. Yeah. I'm coming back on September 17th okay, with Pax and, uh, and it'll be fun. Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was so good to connect. It was so good. Me. It's too hard to reach. But, I know because uh, anyway. we got a bubble in the middle. All right, guys. What did you think of this? What was your favorite part in this interview? What was the most surprising to you? As you saw, there was a lot of aha and very connecting moments between the three of us, JC, Peter, and I, and it was so great to have these conversations. And we're very grateful to not only have an amazing friend in our life, but someone that has so much knowledge and experience with holistic practices and also traditional medicine. With that being said, if you want to hear more of Dr. Peter Dobias, and if you want us to have him again on our channel, this is entirely up to you. If you have specific questions and topics that you would want to ask a holistic veterinarian or even your veterinarian, if you want more expertise on a subject, talking about prevention and different things, drop it here in the comment section because that's how we will know that you want more of these interviews. And I'll check with Dr. Dobias if he'd like to join for future interviews on our channel. Now comes my favorite part.
Alright guys, I am super happy to share these with you because these supplements are the ones we're giving the squad and now you'll have an opportunity to know about these and why we love them so much. Obviously, they're made by Dr. Peter Dobias and we trust him because he cares so much about dogs and he also cares tremendously about sourcing. That's the most important element about his supplements. But let's chat quickly about each one and you'll know why we've been giving these to the squad for a long time now. These type of supplements is actually what we started giving the entire squad when Kimari was diagnosed with cancer about a year and a half ago. It was a different brand back then, but now thank goodness we bumped into Dr. Dobias's brand because he cares so much about sourcing. And again, this means a ton to us. You can give supplements that actually do more harm than good if it's low quality or bad quality. But if you give the right supplements, it gives your dog the benefits for good health. Okay, so let's talk about one of the most important ones that I really feel, this is not just my thoughts, but this is obviously so many veterinarians, holistic veterinarians talk about this, is omega-3s. This has to come from an animal source. It can't be just hemp. It can't be any other type of plant source. It has to be omega-3 animal based. This is gold. It's called feel good omega. Feel good. I love that. So this is number one. It's really important. And just top of my head, it covers skin, joint, and coat, and cognitive function. Those are critical to a dog's well-being. All right, let's talk about Greenman. I love this, this picture because that's Sky. That's Dr. Peter Dobias's old friend that had passed away, but now he lives on on the supplement forever. And our friend Dr. Dobias really loves his dog. So this means so much to him to have, have his memory live on with everyone. And this is how everything was born, but that's a long story. But what Greenman is, it's, I'll just read it right here. It's all natural green superfood for dogs, rich in minerals and amino acids. And the reason why this is so important is because our food system is depleted of so many nutrients and it travels all over the world. There are so many issues that you need to add more nutrients to your dog's diet than just the food. Obviously, if you feed kibble, they add a ton of synthetic supplements to them and that's not a good thing either. But when you eat fresh food, sometimes you just need that extra boost. And this was, again, critical for Kimari's recovery when she had cancer. She needed that extra boost so her body can tackle what was going on. And by giving her the right tools so her body can fight the cancer, everything worked so much better and so much quicker. All right, guys, the last one. It has a really cool name. It's called Gut Sense, gut, healthy gut. So what that is, many of you know, is a healthy gut, probiotics, right? Adding probiotics to your dog's diet is essential. We've been doing it for a long time now. We also do fermented goat milk that adds great probiotics to our, to our pup's diet. You guys have seen that all over our Instagram stories and even on our YouTube videos. We like giving them fermented raw goat milk, but this, this probiotic, covers all your bases. We've given them different brands over time, but again, we trust Dr. Dobias the most when it comes to sourcing, this is a winner. Dr. Dobias created these because he cares tremendously about the well-being of dogs around the world. And today, he was generous enough to share something special with us and with all of you. So the first 50 people that use the link and the coupon code in the description of this video are going to get to try these supplements for their dogs at a discounted price. We really want you to try these supplements, not just because we want you to buy them, it's not that. We're just so happy because it's been such a huge concern for us to give the squad quality source supplements after your dog has cancer. That is literally the only thing on your mind, quality food, quality supplements, preventing cancer from coming back and also keeping the squad healthy for many years to come. They're not babies. I should have started this years ago, but now we feel like we've been given a second chance at life. We can focus on prevention, on feeding them the right diet, giving them a powerhouse of healthy quality source supplements and giving them a great quality of life. There's no better way than handling disease. I'm not a doctor, but that's my opinion as a dog parent. There's no better way to handling disease 
than preventing it in the first place. All right, guys, we hope you try these. Check the description of this video and we'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye.